hello friends so once again welcome to my channel today in this video you will see organization of memory cells in a chip right so here we have taken one example of 16 by 8 memory chip that means in my memory chip total number of locations total number of locations is 16 and each location can hold 8 bits of data so to select one of the location from out of 16 combinations, we require four number of input address lines. So those input address lines will be connected to a decoder. See here, A0, A1, A2, A3. These are connected to a address decoder. The decoder can produce your total 16 outputs, but depending on the value of input, only one output line will be active. Suppose your uh, input values for the address is say 001, then this particular line will be active. If it is all 0, 0, then this line will be active. So whichever line is enabled, see this particular line is called as word line. So depending on our address, whatever address we provide to the decoder, based on that, one of the word line will be enabled. Whenever the word line is enabled, whatever cells, these are my cells, whatever cells are connected in that particular row, all will be enabled. We know that in a flip-flop, your input lines are there, then one enable line is there, and your two output lines are there, Q, Q bar, right? So like that here, one particular uh, cell is nothing but a flip-flop here. The flip-flop can store, one flip-flop can store one bit of data. And because of that, because of this eight number of uh, bits in a particular uh, location, in one row, eight number of flip-flops are there. We have not here drawn all the flip-flops. Here we have drawn three and we have shown here with the dotted lines. So in one row, we have got eight number of flip-flops. Why eight? Because of this eight. And the flip-flops enable line is connected to the word line coming from the decoder. So whenever decoder is making this line active, then all the cells connected in this row will be enabled. That means the flip-flop is enabled. Now, if I want to perform a read operation, then value will go from the cells to the sense write circuit. Here, see, with every, uh, that means, see, here in every column, we have got one sense write circuit. The job of sense write circuit is to detect the values present on its line B and B bar. Here it is B7, B7 bar. If the value is here 1 and it is 0, sense write circuit will output 1 as the value on the data lines. If suppose the value here is 0 and it is 1, then it will be received as 0 and 1 and it will output it as 0. The, this way, the sense write circuit is going to give us the value of output either 1 or 0. Because a flip-flop can store either value 1 or 0. We are talking in binary numbers, right? So one cell can store one bit of information. One cell can store one bit of information. If the cell is storing bit value 1, then here the bit line value will be 1 and here the bit line value will be 0. And see, this bit line is common to all the cells in a particular column. But which particular cell will give the value? That depends on which particular flip-flop is enabled. So see, in this row, all the flip-flops are enabled. So their values are going to the sense right circuit. And sense right circuit will detect the logic level coming on is this line and this line. If it is 1, it is 0, it will output is 1. If it is 0 and it is 1, then it will output it as 0. This is how sense right circuit is going to give us the output. So if I want to perform a read operation, values will come from the cells to the sense right circuit. If I want to perform a write operation, values on the data lines will come from the processor, then sense right circuit will put appropriate value based on the incoming values coming on the data lines. Suppose this is how it is going to give. And then whichever flip-flop is enabled, into that flip-flop, the value will be stored. So see here in this 16 by 8 memory organization, you ha we have got 16 number of rows. And as we have got 16 number of rows, so we have got four number of address lines. And we have got eight data lines. See here, 
these are my data lines b0 to b7 these are my data lines see these lines are bidirectional data can go from the cell or data can come into the cell data will come into the cell for a write operation and data will go from the cell for a read operation so which operation i want to perform that is coming through this line read write line if this value is 0 that means i want to perform a write operation if the value is 1 i want to perform a read operation right and see here see this 16 by 8 one memory chip we are showing in our system there are many chips are there that will give us the total required size of our memory so whenever multiple chips are there from which chip data is going or coming to know that we need to enable the chip for that this cs line is there chip select line is there because mostly we work in multi chip environment so whenever from this chip we are working this cs line should be active understand so see here what we have explained now we have understood is 16 by 8 memory chip is there in this 16 number of rows are there and to select them we have got 4 bit of address 8 bit of data whichever row is selected that particular rows all the flip flops will be enabled and if it is a read operation values will come from the bit lines to the sense write circuit then the sense write circuit will give us the appropriate value on the data uh, data lines and reverse will happen for a write operation chip select line for multi chip environment so as a whole in this diagram what we have seen is to connect this memory chip to my processor how many connections i need to do externally see here these four lines are coming from the processor so these are my external connections and these are my data lines how many data lines will be there eight and how many address lines four so this 4 and 8 are clear. Next, we require read write line also because we need to tell the direction of communication whether it is a read operation or a write operation. Then your chip select pin is also required because we are mostly working in multi chip environment. As a whole, the chip need to be enabled, right? Then inside the chip to enable the sales, we require the appropriate address connected to the decoder, right? And see, apart from all this the whole memory chip is a nothing but electronic device so to work on with electronic device we require power supply so two more pin connections are there to connect the power that is power line and the ground line so as a whole to connect this memory this 16 by 8 memory we require to connect this 16 by 8 chip to my memory processor how many external pins do we require See, first is your address lines. Where from I'll get it? Express it in powers of 2, whatever is the exponent. So, 4 address lines are required. How many data lines? 8. Then, 2. 2 lines for 1 is read write line and 1 is chip select line. And 2 lines, 1 is power supply, another is ground. So, as a whole, to connect this 16 by 8 memory chip, how many total in external connections we need to provide? We need to provide this 8 plus 4 is 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 total connections we require. Hope this external pin connections uh, calculation is clear. And see, one more thing is there. See, in that memory chip, what uh, is memory cell can hold one bit of information. That can be one or can be zero. Memory cells are organized in the form of an array, right? And one row is called as one memory word. See, one row is called as one memory word. But please do not confuse it, this with my word length. That is something different. And in one row, whatever cells are connected, that we term as a word. Then all cells of a row are connected to a common line. What is that? Word line. Where from it is getting connected? It is connected from the out. Uh, this line is coming from the output of the decoder. So based on the input provided, the word line, one of the word line will become active. Word line is connected to the address decoder. That just I told. Then the sense write circuits are connected to the data input output lines of the memory chip. And this sense write circuit is common for all the cells in a particular column. And data, this word line is common to all the cells connected in a row. That I need to remember. So then this we have done. After this, We'll see one more. See, this 128 by 8 memory chip. 
to connect this 128 by memory chip how many external pins we require so where from i'll start from the address lines so 120 for 128 i require seven address lines eight data lines then one read write one chip select and then two lines for power supply and ground so as a whole it is nothing but 19 lines so see for 128 by 8 we require 19 total external pins and what is the capacity of this memory chip means how many bits what is the number of bits it can store 128 by 8 so what is this this is nothing but 2 to the power 7 into 2 to the power 3 that is 2 to the power 10 bits it can store just remember this right next is 1k by 1 for 1k how many bits address line 10 one data line right then two read write chip select the way we did previously and two lines for power supply and ground so total how many is coming 15 right and what is the capacity 2 to the power 10 locations are there each location is holding one bit so 2 to the power 10 bits this particular chip can store so this is the capacity is similar to my previous organization then 64 by 16 64 by 16 how many uh, external pins are required to know that see here we have six address lines because of 64 then 16 data lines will be required then two read write chip select another two power supply and ground so total is 26 address uh, total 26 external connections are required and what is the capacity of this chip 64 means what 2 to the power 6 into 2 to the power 4 what is that 2 to the power 10 so see what we have seen is in this three organizations one is this one one was what 1k by 1 another one was 128 by 8 all of them are giving me same memory capacity all of you agree see this all three will give me same memory capacity that is the number of bits they can store is nothing but 2 to the power 10 bits but this organization is requiring 26 external connection this requires 15 and this one is requiring 19 already we have calculated so see their capacity is coming all same but the number of pins external pins connected is minimum in case of 1k by 1 so if i need to provide one 1k capacity memory then which particular chip design i will go for the answer will be the one which requires minimum number of external pin connections and in our case the answer will be 1k by 1 hope you are getting me see in all the three organizations the number of bits they can store is same what is that 1k right that is 2 to the power 10 bits they can store but one organization requires 19 connection another requires 26 connection and this require 15 connection wherever we require minimum connections to be done that uh, that particular design we will go for so uh, after this discussion we will conclude that though the my three memory chips are going to provide me the same number of the same capacity but i will go for the chip design which is 1k by 1 reason behind is understood because it requires minimum number of external pins compared to my other two chip connections right so next in my next video i will be discussing how to design 1k by 1 memory till then thank you